That is pretty strong stuff from uh, Senator Cruz, really taking Chief Justice John Roberts to task over the, the court's DACA decision. Joining us now, Ken Cuccinelli, Acting Deputy Homeland Security Secretary. Sir, give me the bigger picture here. What are the wider consequences of that ruling? Well, the wider consequences, and I would agree with Senator Cruz's remarks, um, are that it, it encourages Congress to abandon its duty again in the future and to, and to encourage other future presidents to use their pen and a phone to try to rewrite laws. President Trump said he wouldn't do that, that he's going to act within the boundaries of the law, but if the Supreme Court is going to kick those boundaries out beyond anything the founders ever envisioned, then you're going to move more and more power into the executive branch, and that's a mistake. It's a mistake. And I'll remind you, Stuart, almost two years ago in front of the last election, it was Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi who walked away from discussions on the DACA subject. They abandoned those folks, and the president was still at the table and wanted to keep working through to solve the problem legally by legislation. And they abandoned them because they believe there was political advantage to be gained by playing politics with these okay. folks in the DACA program. Uh, apart from the legal and constitutional principle involved here, the Which practical is, is we, we, absolutely yeah. a primary important. Yeah. Yes, sir. A, a primary importance. No question about it. But the practical result is that these, what is it, 600,000 dreamers get to stay longer. And I put it to you, sir, that a lot of Americans do not object. They've been here since they were children. They're brought here by their parents. It's not their fault that they're illegally here. A lot of people want them to stay. Well, Stuart, the, the fact there is that they are here illegally, and the president was willing to discuss some resolution to this, but the, his political opponents were more interested in trying to, tr hoping that the president would fail on this because of just polling, like you said, rather than solving the problem. They're using these people. The president said very clearly yesterday and right off the bat, this wasn't a loss, this was a delay. And you saw this morning, he gave us the instruction at the Department of Homeland Security, redo the guidelines to wind down DACA. And that is intended, and it will have the practical effect of forcing this back into Congress's hands where it always belonged yep. in the first place. Fair point, sir. Now, one more thing. We're seeing reports right now that the Trump administration is considering an executive order to suspend certain work visas. Can you tell us anything more about that? Well, I, I really can't, Stuart. I would point back okay. to the proclamation the president made on April 22nd, where he suspended incoming green cards uh, to preserve those work slots for Americans. Uh, you just reported on the weekly uh, unemployment claims, and uh, they're still they're still high. Uh, we reached a Trump economy in February, three and a half percent unemployment. Uh, uh, black unemployment has been below eight percent for more time under President Trump than the rest of your life and my life combined for the entire rest of our lives. So that's what he wants to get back to. He's looking at all his options. We at the Department of Homeland Security have been advising him on all the opportunities uh, that he can use his executive authority uh, to hold, on, hold back on some of the incoming immigration that relates to keeping jobs open for Americans. And we'll see what the president decides as to how to proceed there. Sir, I just want to show you and our audience a brief clip from Fox and Friends this morning. Mm -hmm. They had a DACA recipient on their show, a man named Hilario Yanez. Here's how he reacted to the DACA decision. Roll tape, please. The president has stand for the community, uh, DACA community. He has supported the DACA community. If anything, he's stepping up to the plate and forcing Congress to do his job. I love this country with all my heart, and I would die for this country. And all I want is for the president, along with Congress, to give me an opportunity to continue to serve my community, to continue to pay my taxes, to continue to be with my wife, with my family. All I want to do is just give back to this country that I love so much and has given me so endless opportunities. He's saying exactly what, in a very articulate fashion, precisely what you've said, sir. Yeah, you know, this is about people. It's, you know, we talk about a case and we talk about a program. It's about people. And for a decade, 
the left has been playing politics with these people's lives. It was the president who was willing, President Trump, who was willing to try to solve this problem. And it was Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi who walked away because they thought they'd get an advantage in the 2018 elections. And people should remember that um, as we now move out of a court case, are they going to come back to the table? The president never left the table. He was, as your interviewee said, he was always willing to talk and to negotiate and to try to solve this problem legally. No pen and a phone within the boundaries of the law and the Constitution. That's President Trump's approach to this. It, it. differs entirely from President Obama and Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi. Ken Cuccinelli, thanks very much for coming on the show this morning. Good to be always with you, Stuart. Always a pleasure. Yes, sir. Thank Good you very much. Good to be with you.